Hey everybody, it's Kimberly Tilly here coming to you from my home in Toronto, Canada. And tonight I want to talk to all of you about dreams and goals. And what are your dreams and goals for 2017? Do you have a plan? I know I do. And it's because of the gentleman sitting right in front of you tonight, Mr. Tom McMurian. I was privileged enough last night to be on a Zoom cast where Tom went into depth about dreams and goal setting and having a plan. So with that, I'm going to introduce Tom to all of you tonight and um, let Tom explain to you the definition and his definition of goals, his definition of dreams, and how you would go about setting your goals and dreams for 2017. I'm taking away. Thank you, Kim. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's interesting. It's a real pleasure to be working with you and, and you know, get to be, uh, you know, I don't know, interviewed by you. You're a bit of a legend when it comes to YouTubing, so it's always an honor to be with somebody that's uh, doing big things like you are. You know, it was, uh, I've been goal setting for a long time, Kim. I, I went to my first Anthony Robbins. I mean, I was listening to Nightingale Conant tapes, uh, Man, Jim Rohn and Zig Ziglar and, and Brian Tracy and all those guys when I was very young. My dad used to make me listen to them when we'd go to our lake place during the summertime and he'd pop in those those sometimes eight track cassettes, then they had cassettes. And I remember that so well. But um, we've always been brought up with, with goal setting. And I think the first goal setting session I did was with Anthony Robbins. And he had one that was in unlimited power. And it was like set one-year goal, set five-year goal, set 10-year goal, set 20-year goals. And then he had to do something. I mean, I think he had to write out 100 lifetime goals, if I can remember right. And then you had to break it down by time and all of that. And it, it was just a, it was a daunting task. It was hard to do 25 goals, much less 100. And it really took a while to be able to do that. And so... When I got into um, goal setting, I started looking, you know, of course, Think and Grow Rich has a great way of setting goals, and there's, you know, there's lots of them out there that will teach you how to set goals, and so, you know, when I got into reading a book by Stephen Scott called Mentored by a Millionaire, really great book. You know, Stephen Scott was the head of a infomercial company that uh, did Chuck Norris and, and was it Christy Brinkley on the uh, Total Body Fitness Gym. And that was like a huge, obviously, like the number one selling product of all time, I think, on infomercials. But, oh, infomercials. Yeah. So okay. I, it, it's funny. I, I built a relationship with uh, with Mr. Scott, and he just became a mentor of mine, not only through his book, but in person. He helped me, uh, you know, when we were going through a very challenging time and donated some books to a program I was working with. And, you know, we're, uh, we look at this book, and, and I, I, I just – I always thought, man, if everybody would set goals, they, they scientifically have an opportunity to achieve more. And I, I remember a few quotes that resonate with me about goal setting. And one came from Tony Robbins. He said, it's bringing kind of like the unreal into the real, um, the visible into the invisible, it bringing the invisible into the visible. And that's what goals do. They, they, uh, when you put them to paper, they consciously take something that's invisible and give you the opportunity to make it visible. And I like that. But you know the one thing that has scared the death out of me about not doing my goals every year was that if I don't have them set, I'm helping someone else achieve theirs. Sure. And I, you know, I got to think, I, you, when you think oh. about, yeah, I mean, do you want to be a sheep? I mean, I don't want to be a sheep, you know. I'm not, I'm not interested in helping somebody else. And so that's kind of where the whole basis of my goal setting came from. But that one quote right there makes me set my goals every year. And, of course, you know, during the holidays, everybody kind of slows down. So you have time to – I do a little bit of retrospection on the year, and I think about what I did right and what I did wrong. And, you know, I celebrate my achievements, and I, I note my failures. And uh, because if you don't note them, they'll sneak back up on you again so you you want to see it coming. And so uh, Stephen Scott's book had a very simple system that I think it everybody used. And you saw this the other night when we were on the Zoom cast. Yeah. I asked how many of you all set goals? And nobody raised their hand. It, it was mind-blowing. How can you be in home business, in network marketing, and 
building team building and a very numbers oriented business and not have a target. And I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'll tell you, you messaged me and said, be on. And I said, you know, I have people here and uh, I'll try and, you know, sneak on when I can. But when I started to like, when I popped on and I started to hear you and the content that you were sharing, I said to my company, I said, you know what? I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse me, but I have plans to make for 2017 so you're gonna have to wait till I get back and I spent the next three hours with my company like the people that I had over talking about goals and dreams and it's not just for people that are in business it's in life period yeah. like if you don't have goals and dreams where's your life headed really yeah well, I mean the I think a lot of people don't they don't they don't understand the power of them and no. you know, but once you set them one time I remember when I did my first dream boards and I went back and looked at it like 10 years after I found it in, in, a, in a box in an attic and I looked at it and I'm like wow I owned a boat like that I bought a really nice Rolex like that I mean it was like I don't know it was more than 80% of the things on that dream board I had actually achieved in that 10 year period and I just thought it was pretty interesting that uh, you know, dream boards are something we'll talk about today as well. They're fun to build. It's kind of like it takes you back to being a kid again. And, yes. and um, But I have a funny story to tell. And, and I think what inspires me to want to create wealth, uh, live where I want to live, live how I want to live, and create wealth doing it. That's my slogan. Okay. And But Richie Rich was a mentor of mine early on in life. Mine too. <laughs> yeah. You know, he had a dog named Dollar. I mean, I thought that was the coolest thing. Like if I had a cat, what would it be named? I, I don't know, uh, you know, Penny, um, yeah. but um, Porter. But, uh, you know, I, I look at, um, you know, what, did he have a cat? I'll have to go back and review my notes. But anyway, it did have a, uh, you know, helicopter with a money blade. I mean. It yeah. did have money blades. It yeah. did. I remember that. <laughs> it had a helipad with a money blade. had you know, dollars on it. Yeah. It's he didn't have, didn't have a Rolls Royce <laughs> symbol. He had a, mo a money blade. <laughs> no. But, it's funny uh, to think back to that. Yeah. Man, those were great comic books. I think we had to go back and probably revisit some of those sometime and, and do a, a webcast. That would be fun. But anyway, yes, um, I think he inspired me to really uh, latch on to the saying that no limits exist where no boundaries are recognized. That, that me embodies Richie Rich. No limits exist where no boundaries are recognized. And I look at the boundaries that everybody, the self-imposed boundaries that everybody puts on themselves, and I'm like, wow. You know, you need to tear up that contract. And have you read the Four Agreements by? Um, I, have, I have them. I have the whole set. I have the book set. Phenomenal, phenomenal book. book. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I think that's a life-changing book. It's as probably enlightened as probably The Alchemist is by Paulo Coelho. Um, if you really. And they're so simple. It's easy. It's an easy read. It's not complicated. Like people think it's going to be all psychology and everything. it's not. It's so simple. It's about it's it's uh, and I always say that success hides itself in simplicity, and that yes. book is one of the most simple books that you'll read. And it'll, it, you know, when you think about the limits that you put on life, it's kind of like your dad told you you'd never be successful. Well, if you ever sign that contract, you just need to tear up that contract. You know, uh, it's in your it's in your file cabinet, not his. So you need to pull it out and tear it up and say, I'm going to move forward. So. You know, as we get into goal setting, one of the things you have to realize is no limits exist where no boundaries are recognized. If you have boundaries, you need to go to that file cabinet and you need to check why they're there, who who signed the contracts, and you need to tear them up if, if you possibly can. And so I think that was uh, something big. But Stephen Scott's book uh, broke down a dreams to goals, goals to task. And I'm a very methodical person. I know how to rebuild engines. I'm very mechanical. And... When I look at a goal setting thing, it's got to make sense to me. You know, it's got like I just can't randomly make affirmations. They're, those are kind of flaky to me. I like affirmations, don't get me wrong. But, you know, they got to have a little bit more substance and they got to have a little bit deeper connection. And that's what I loved about it. And the fact that it's simple. You don't make it complicated. Like you were saying, like when you went to the Anthony Robbins conference and you were at the conference. Yep. So imagine somebody sitting at home trying to do it. I mean, you're there in the moment with the 
you know, the momentum and all the vibe and everything. But for someone that's sitting at home, that's it's a daunting task. They're not going to do it. Yeah. It'll never get done. And that's what I love about yours and the way you did it the other night. It's so simple. Anybody can do it. Well, here's the simple thing. Um, first off, we, we look at the definitions of what a dream is. And, you know, I think it's very important that a dream is a series of thoughts uh, or emotions during sleep. It's an experience of waking life having characteristics of a dream, which means dreaming with your eyes open. I, I love that. An experience of waking life um, or a visionary creation of the imagination, a daydream that maybe you want to bring into reality. It's a state of mind marked by abstraction or a release from reality. Um, I would say, or it could be a, not a release from reality, it could be a, an acceptance of an incredible reality. But um, I, I think it's, it's, you know, a lot of people go through life, as I call, sleepwalkers. Mm -hmm. And I like to tell people, dream with your eyes open. It's so much more fun. And that's what Walt Disney did. If you've ever read any books, if you ever want to know about somebody with a powerful imagination, uh, read, a, read a biography about uh, um, yeah, an autobiography about uh, Walt Disney. To see I just watched the movie the other night about his life. About oh, it was so amazing. It was incredible. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, such everything. a simple man, and uh, wow, like just yeah. dreams. Like he believed in his dreams. Yep. So um, a dream is also a um, strongly desired goal or purpose. A strongly desired goal or purpose, um, which is. Uh, something that fully satisfies a wish or an idea. So that's what a dream is. So we have to create a dream statement, which is a one-page, 250 to 400-word, handwritten or typed dream statement. But those are kind of tough to come up with. You can break a dream statement into several categories, family, health, business, charitable. So you, there's four paragraphs right there. Mm -hmm. um, material, you know, a uh, travel, you know, lifestyle. So maybe that's five or six paragraphs. And we'll talk about the dream statement second, because the first thing we want to do is we want to write out 10 I wills. Okay. And I will do this. I oh. will do that. And a yeah. definition of goal is an end. Uh, it's the end towards which effort is directed aim. Uh, an area or object towards which players, so that's, that's the game one, the act or action of causing a ball or puck to go through, that's another one. Uh, where's the one I'm looking for? Um, the end toward which effort is directed aim. So that's kind of a goal. It's, it's, it's like, you know, yeah, it's like trying to get a puck, you know, in, in, in the goal. So the goal but, in the net, yep, got to get it in there. But I, I think what's important about a goal is it's got a, it's quantified. It has a number to it. It has a time frame. It has quantity. So when we think of quantified, um, every I will should either have a termination date, meaning by June, uh, or I will earn X, or I will complete task by June or July or whatever, but it's got to have a number associated. So I think every I will, so let me, let me give you an example of my I wills real quick, and I'm going to go to a screen share so we can look at my goals for 2017. And I'll cover my dream statement later, but I, I want to um, I want to just talk about the goal. So, oops, didn't want to do that. There we go. So let's just look at a sample. I will earn 1.5 million dollars in 2017. I will own 500,000 one coins. I will purchase 250 bitcoins. See how specific they are? They're not costing attached. Yeah, they're not complicated. I will purchase 15,000 Ethereum. I will own 50, you know, I will purchase a 1970s muscle car. And so these goals, I will lose 30 pounds. Who doesn't have a goal to, to lose some weight? Um, some people don't have to, which I'm jealous of them. Um, I will build a team of 25,000 members. And not, not all of them. Uh, I could say by December if I wanted to. But notice how I, um, I bolded the dates. Yes. So that was a conscious thing that I did. So that's an anchor. So when I anchor these things in bold, my subconscious knows that. And it will start working towards that date to make sure that I have the 30000 set aside for the muscle car. Okay? And so, um, you and know. And that's in your subconscious brain then. 
Yeah. But your subconscious brain is working towards that. My brain knows I did this. I highlighted it and I did it, I did control B and my brain knows I did that. Yeah. Okay. So it was a conscious active of that's an anchor. So I like anchoring, you know, things like when you have dates or money amounts or whatever. Um, th these are very, very important. And so when you write out your 10 I wills, okay, um, I will, I think we talk about you and in, in working with, uh, you know, uh, you know, working with your family, I will spend more time with my family or I will, and, and then you break it down into tasks and we'll talk about tasks in just a minute. But I just wanted you to know, they don't have to be complicated. I will do this. I will do that. Um, and they are material, and some people say, well, man, your goals are so material, they're so, you know, but that's what goals are. They have dates, yeah. they have things, well, I have some, you know, I, have, I will travel to 12 countries, I will buy a watch. Now, I also look at these I wills, I probably have some in here that aren't important, but I wrote down 20 of them, and I may refine it to 15, I may look at these and say, you know, maybe I don't need to launch this salepreneur blog this year, or um, publish the book or you know buy a TV uh, panel rec recording studio I may not need that but I may break it down and maybe trim these down a little bit so I focus on the ones that are important right. um, versus the ones that are kind of fluff and so once that's done um, then we get into the task statement so let's look at the definition of task real quick Do you have any questions on that as far as the definition of goals though does that all make sense yeah, it all makes sense. I mean, it's it's so simple to me. And before, it was very overwhelming. And like I said, I mean, I was guilty of not doing it myself because I just felt it was so overwhelming. And I didn't know how to break it down into, the you know, like, you've chunked it down easily. So you give me an I will. I will get my health back by... June of 2017. That's the latest. Perfect. That's the latest. So, you know, it could be now, before then, but I'm giving myself a deadline that I will not go past. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So you've anchored it. We're good on the anchor. Um, now, I bet that has some tasks involved in it, doesn't it? Does. Okay. So let's, let's talk about the definition of task because a lot of people can say that, but if you don't break it down and know what your actionable tasks are, Mm -hmm. you realize that there may be one task that you actually need help with like you might need to help with a doctor or you might need to help of medical professionals or whatever and that needs to be one of your tasks um, I talked to somebody today about buying a house and she said uh, I want to buy a house by December you know I'm like great and she goes well, what are the tasks involved in that I said well number one you need to identify the area where you want to live you need to determine the price range of what you can afford. You need to understand the monthly payment. Um, you need to see what school district it's in because you've got kids. <laughs> yeah. So there was a lot of tasks actually involved in doing that. You got to know how much you need to save for the down payment. You know things like that. And, and the lawyer fees and all the rest. Yeah, Everything. there's a budget. What's your budget? A budget is a, you know you definitely have a task in raising the money. And ultimately, that may become part of your savings goal. So you probably are going to have, like mine was to have a hundred thousand dollar emergency fund just sitting in an account that I know I have access to any time. Um, you know, if something were to happen to me health wise, where I got you know had you know be down for a year or whatever, I'd have a hundred thousand bucks to pay my expenses or whatever. So a definition of a task is usually an assigned piece of work, often to be finished within a certain time. Okay, um, something hard or unpleasant. Guess what? A lot of tasks are things that people want to avoid doing. Nice. Yeah. Um, Everybody. A duty or function. Um, so when we think about a task, that's where I guess we would say the rubber meets the road. Okay. Um, if I like, I know to do my business. If I'm going to recruit, if I'm going to do two a days, I've got a little system that. Um, I send out 50 private messages per day. I don't do it. My virtual assistant does it. And if I had to do it, I, it would drive me crazy. Sending out, sitting down every day and identifying 50 people. I have a, I have a spreadsheet out of my 4,600 or 4,700 friends on Facebook. I have 1,200 of them that are on my, let's just call it my hit list. 
meaning my distribution list of people who get content from me. And, and, know and you know that. Yeah, they know me. I mean, they friended me for some reason, but um, I send out, like, uh, if I find a really interesting video, I'm going to send that video to all 1,200. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, but one of those tasks is sending out 50 messages a day for almost um, 25 days. Right. And guess what? Tom ain't going to do that task because Tom is not about sitting in front of a computer and cutting and pasting messages. Hey, like so me. I realized when I wrote down that task that I was going to have to hire a virtual assistant because mm -hmm. I just knew I would. That was one of those mundane tasks. I don't mind mundane tasks, but that one I'm not doing. And so I realized very quickly I didn't resonate with that task. Yes. So the minute you don't resonate with a task, you need to say, okay, how can I fix this problem? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you work 12 hours a day and you, you, know, you don't have time to do it or you're exhausted. Well, you're going to have to find another way. If you're going to hit that goal, you've got to find a way to do that task. And I don't care if you outsource it or whatever, um, but you're never going to get around it. Or you automate it with technology, however you do it. It's very and important. A lot of people don't know about that when they first get into the industry. They have no idea what outsourcing is. I know when I did, when I came in in 2011, I thought I had to do everything. I had no idea what outsourcing meant. I didn't know I could outsource something like that for. Until you read Four Hour Work Week, then you figured it out, right? Right, yeah. And then it was like, oh my gosh, really? You want a bonus too? Oh, right. Yeah, and then I was like, outsourcing, what is that? And you realize that you can pay somebody $200 a month or less, and that helps support their family. You're not taking away, you know, because that's your mindset too. You don't have to think that you're taking away from somebody because in other countries and in other cultures, that is enough to pay for their whole family to live for a month. So you want, a, you want a, a hiring outsourcer tip? Pardon? You want a, a tip on how to hire an outsourcer? Yes, please. Okay, so this is a little bonus for this video. All right. So I, what I do is I identify five or six candidates, whether it's through Elance or through Guru or just through personal networking, and I get them on a Skype call and video call face-to-face. -face. And, of course, every outsourcer you meet says they have an MBA, they've got this, they've got that, 12 years of college, whatever. You know, they always make up some crazy resume, and they've got an amazing resume. They always do. Yes. And so what I do is let's pretend you're my outsourcer. Okay. Hey, uh, Kim, I really like your resume. I'm getting ready to type a question right here in the chat, and you have two minutes to type it right back to me in the same chat in your type English. So I want to I see you actually respond to my question right now in English, and you have two minutes to do it. Good. I wondered how you did that so fast. <laughs> how does Tom do that so fast? He you, you will find it. Most of them will go, uh, can I, can I, can I get back to you on this? It's like, no, because you're going to go try and find a friend. Actually, you're going to outsource that answer. Or Google it. Yeah, yeah, yeah Google it. It. No, It's usually a simple question. It's like, uh, tell me about your favorite uh, pet that you've owned. Um, what was his name? What would, you know, you just, it's just, they're stupid questions, but it's kind of like, uh, explain your family to me. What, you know, what, how, how, you know, what, whatever. Um, what's your favorite sport? Uh, tell me why you like it. Just type that real quick. Give me an answer. I mean, it'd be easy for me to do. I mean, you probably say, well, my favorite sport is hockey. I like yeah. it because they're rough and tough and they're good looking men and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden you have two minutes to do it. And so anyway, we're getting off topic, but that's a great, for, pe is. for people who want a good outsourcer, they have to be able to type good English, and it, it's got to pass your test. Um, it, it, they have to be like you. I have seen some crazy stuff. I've seen people type back to me, and I'm like, I don't even know what that means. You know, it's like weird. You know, that's like. Uh, <laughs> Such a good test. I never even thought to do that. But you got to do it live right in front of them, and it's yeah, surprising. Yeah, I never right even thought to do that. that. Anyway, let's get back on this. So that's a task that um, – you need to hire an outsourcer, so I just gave you a tip on how to hire an outsourcer. And, and of course, through Guru and all uh, Elance, you can find tons of VAs and, and offer them half of what they're asking, too. That's another tip. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so we, have, so we have goals. We've done our, 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 our goals, okay? 
and our goals are quantified. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you every goal that we write down, Kim, it's got to have at least two to five tasks. Right. So last night, Candace Rivero, on the video, we talked about um, my goal is to own an RV. Right. So, well, guess what? I got to save amount. I got a task of how much money I've got to save, right? Mm -hmm. And also to drive an RV, I have to have a specific license. I got to have a commercial license. Do. So one of my tasks is I have to get a commercial license. And of course, with that, one of the tasks is I've got to study 20 hours of self-study. Um, and we broke it down with Candace, and she broke down what it would take. And I'm like, wow, this goal is going to require like eight tasks. And then, of course, we talked to Steve Shannon, who wanted to buy an airplane. Again, same deal. But he had to also lose weight to meet his physical requirements because, he, you know, um, so that means he's got a whole bunch of tasks. I mean, losing weight means good diet, it means exercise, it means, you know, going to the doctor, get checkups, you know, things like that. So when you when you break down the task, and you know what this whole exercise does, Kim, is it frees your mind up. It's kind of like, I mean, it empties. I feel like when I do my goals, it clears out like the attic of about 20% of my addicts where I've got more room to be creative and stuff like that. So. Once we have our dreams done, we do two to three, two to five tasks per dream. So let me show you how I did that on, on, on my goals real quick. Okay, so um, let's just take, uh, let's take a simple one here. I will purchase 15,000 Ethereum coins. I know they're about seven bucks a piece. So I will invest 15% of my cash income in purchasing coins. And then one of my tasks is I'll purchase on pullbacks and I'll probably be selling on some parabolic spikes. So when it really takes off like a rocket, I may sell into it and wait for it to pull back. So I've got a little bit of a task strategy there. Um, I will purchase a 1970s muscle car. Now, I already know kind of wh where I'm going to buy it. I know the dealer where I'm going to get it. So I've already researched it. So I didn't include that task. But maybe I don't know. Right? Yeah, I, no, it's probably going to be either a Chevelle or an Impala with a long trunk on it. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I kind of, I almost want a four door. I actually like the Riviera too because it's, uh, it can be muscled up a little bit too. But yeah, I want a cruiser, a cruiser muscle car, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so I might put on here. I will, um, I will research, um, you know, uh, Meekum's auction site would, would be a really good task. Um, um, you know, or I will look for the best websites for buying cars. I will join a blog, you know, for buying old cars. So there, there could be a whole bunch of tasks. Uh, I also need to check on insurance. Um, Police um, seizures and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. You can get really good deals. Yeah. And <laughs> really so. good deals. Uh, that's how I got my Denali. And my Range Rover, and I know that was on your wife's list, and I was shocked last night when I heard that that she has a Yukon Denali, yep. and I had one, and I traded it in on a um, Range Rover. It wasn't the Sport, but it was a really nice $120,000 Range Rover, but it was custom, and it was customized by a Chinese gentleman in Vancouver, and there was no other Range Rover like it, and I was I got it at a really good price, yeah. and uh, it's because it was it was custom, yeah. and, and not a lot of people want you know they want to buy it off of the lot, and I will never buy a vehicle off the lot. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, now um, I'm I'm real big on buying used cars, and I like buying I like I like buying people's depreciation basically, as I always say. It. Um, here's a really good one, Kim. I will lose 30 pounds. So one of the tasks is I got to be more conscious of what I eat. Uh, I have to walk on a treadmill uh, for 30 minutes five times a week. Um, I will lift weights five times a week, which I enjoy doing. But one of the big things that I struggle with is drinking a gallon of water every day. And so, yeah. So I've got to find a special gallon of water that I, I saw a really good thing on that. Um, some really powerful marketers that I know, they did this challenge with the water, and they have it written on there how, how much per hour or what time of the day, yeah. and, they, and they drink it 
the gallon and they get it drank that day so it's really different they, they have a phone app too that goes off that reminds you to drink a glass of water as well oh, okay you, cool. do it, you press the button that you did it and it rewards you and gives you points as well so there's a, yeah there's all kinds of methodologies to do it nice but anyway um and something you'll know a bit about um i will have a hundred thousand subscribers on my youtube channel yeah. And so I will purchase a course on how to optimize videos and make one video per day. I'll invest a certain amount of my income in pay-per-view and pay-per-click advertising, um, just things like that. So every single task that you, every goal that you write has to have these actionable tasks that break down what you need to do to, to achieve it. And I know to maximize my business centers, I've got to recruit 100 people per business center. You know, that's kind of one of my, my goals or one of my tasks that I, I've accepted uh, that I have to do to achieve. So if I do these tasks, um, I can buy these coins. If I do these tasks, I can buy these coins. If I do these tasks, I'll lose 30 pounds, you know, yeah. hopefully more. But uh, so that's, uh, that's our third step. Now, I like to, you know, once I have this done, um, then I like to go revisit my dream state and make sure that my goals resonate. Resonate is a very important word. Um, you know, like when you say you're gonna make 900,000 cash, you gotta make sure that this, yeah. adds up, this adds up and this adds up and everything you're trying to do, because if you're like wanting to make 900,000 but you're spending 1.9 million, you know, so, something's not resonating, you know, it's not gonna jive. But anyway, um, once you have that done, you can get into you know what I call is your dream statement, and you don't have to be you don't have to be an incredible writer. Um, you know, it's funny when we were talking with Candace like that the other night. It's like she was like one of her goals was she wanted to drive to Mexico in her RV. I was like, why? She goes, because I want to see it. I'm like, oh no, that was awesome at the did, end. Did you oh. see her smile when she goes? Because yeah. I'm gonna put my feet. I want to park my RV on the beach. And I want to put my awning out, and I want to light a fire, and I want to walk down the beach and feel the breeze in my hair. And I said, "They're well, drinking their cervezas and all this," and it was like you could feel it and smell it. And I just started. Yeah. I sort of felt like a cat as big as I was smiling. I was like, "Wow!" And I was on full screen too. I think everybody saw how I realized that I got her to break out her paragraph. And so, you know, when you think of it, it's kind of like, oh, you know, over the next year I'll hire a full-time assistant. Well, why? Well, so she can run and you know learn and run every aspect of my business. Why? Well, this this uh, assistant will provide me with more time to invest in relationships on my team. Why? Uh, so I can wake up every day in the morning and enjoy my cup of coffee and read a chapter of a book and become a more creative person. I can lay off the mundane tasks on my. So I know what that means. And so when you when you take each paragraph and you go when you're done, if you just go why why. And you mm -hmm. dig deeper and dig deeper and dig deeper, and eventually you'll have something that's phenomenal. And I know we're we're running a little over on time, but I want to I want to leave one last tip, Kim. That is probably one of the the most golden things I've ever done. You know, in Think and Grow Rich, they say you need to read your goals twice a day. And the problem is you're always around people, and you look like a goofball. That people are like, what? Because nobody does their goals. Right. So if you're, if you're like true. standing. If you're hiding, hiding over in the corner and reading your goals, people think you're weird or something's wrong with you. Anti-social. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, or just you know you're talking to yourself in the corner. They might call call an agency on you or something like that. But so here's my tip: once you have this page done and you have your goals, now let me let me explain something to me. I put my tasks in here under each one, but actually we'll move these to a separate page so only my goals will be on this page. And I don't, I don't, my tasks, once they're done, I, I just, it's more, that's more of a self-check thing. I don't, I laminate, I put my dream statement on one side, and I put my goals on the other, okay? And I get three copies, and I put one in my shower, Kim, because, you know, with the greatest personal time you have of every day is in the shower, okay? And I always just say, you're, you're, you're naked with your goals, you know? That that's the, you're, it's when you're thinking you're free and you know and that's when you have time yourself. Phones aren't ringing. There's no distractions. Yeah, and it's it's laminated, and you can sit there with that hot water pouring over as you first get in the shower, and you can say, 
I will earn $1.5 million or more. I will own five, and you just say it out loud. Nobody else is in the bathroom with you. And you know, there's some people that are even intimidated by reading their goals in front of their spouses. Wow. Their, their spouses usually marry your opposite person. And so when you read your goals, your spouse is like, yeah, you'll never achieve that. Now, nah, you know, you'll, you always have, you always, it always seems like sometimes there's a negative person around your life, but uh, that doesn't have to be. But anyway, hopefully that's not the case, but often it is. I will tell you that there's a lot of people who become entrepreneurs and their spouses don't agree with their decisions because there's, they lose that security. Very so, true. I'm 45 and still single. There you go. <laughs> We're uh, we're we're gonna let, we're gonna laminate three <laughs> three copies, three copies, and we're gonna put one in our shower. We're gonna put one in our briefcase, and we're gonna put one at our desk. And the reason we'll put one in our briefcase is because if we go in the car, we're stuck in traffic. We can always revisit our goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then another bonus, what I would do is I would look at these goals and like I have cut out a um, regatta watch, so. Um, let me see if I can find my um, dreams. I just found it the other day. And um, let me move this out of the way. Put in there. Let me just go to pictures and see if it's there. I think that's where it is. Yeah. But uh, you see dream, dream pictures. Okay. So um, you can see I've got some cars in here. And then specifically, you know, the watch. And so I will cut that out, I'll print that off or find a, I can print it off my color printer and I will put it on a dream board, okay? And so I make a collage of everything that's associated with my goals. You know, maybe I want, uh, you know, this car. I, I, you know, I love the GTO, uh, great looking. Oh, it's a nice color. I like the champagne. Yeah, like it. And, um, you know, then there's the, the old Riviera, which I think is just a great looking car. But, um, you know, and I tell people, I just want to buy a car that I know that's going to double in value. That's really, I want a car that it goes up in value. I don't buy cars that go down in value. But uh, anyway, so those are, uh, I, I'll laminate them. I'll put them in my shower. Um, I'll read my dream statement every day I'm in the shower. I will, um, I'll read my goals. And the I'm, fridge is a good place too. What's that? Refrigerator, your fridge. Refrigerator is a good place too, unless your family and kids are in there and they all think you're crazy. You're reading your goals. Sometimes they understand, but okay. to me, but I, I, I read them and like you know support you with it too, or they'll see something on there that doesn't. No, no. I don't know. Some so many people are apprehensive about goals. Really? It's like it's almost like an intimate, private thing that people want to. I don't want to say keep it to yourself. I don't mind sharing my goals, but some people are kind of like. You know, they have to read their goals enough to where they believe them, and then when they believe them, they might be more open with them, and they start achieving them, and they feel more confident. But I think in the beginning, Kim, it's a very personal thing. Sure. And um, I, I, you know, I wouldn't, it's like people are afraid of personal speaking, you know, reading your goals out loud in front of people. Some people don't like it. So my advice is, where it always has worked for me, is just read them in the shower. Sure. That's and a good idea. We're in the car. But, you know, even then people are like, shoot, if I'm reading these people, they're going to think I'm talking to themselves and they're going to report me, you know, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. anyway, that's, uh, that's and, and by the way, 10 goals, you know, that's all you need is 10 goals, two, yeah. two, two to five. So you're talking 20 to 50 tasks that you're going to have to come up with. And when mm -hmm. you're done with that, writing a one-page agreement, it'll probably take you two hours, maybe three hours if you throw in the dream board. And I will tell you, it's one of the greatest exercises. It's scientifically proven. It is proven by CEOs, people that become billionaires. They all set goals. And if you're not, you're not doing it, you, you fall into the 93% of the world that uh, live an aimless life. And there's nothing worse than living an aimless life. Success leaves clues. And they have habits that they perform every single day. They do. Yeah. That's what habits. And so um, we have a domain. If you want to see the full blown training and see some of the examples that we talked about, uh, mm -hmm. dreamsfor2017.com. Dreamsfor2017.com. And there's a, I think it was about a two hour session we did. But if you really want to. Phenomenal. Yeah, it was fun. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. And, we, and we asked a lot of people what their dreams were. We dug into it. So it's, it's, uh, it was awesome. I think we had over 100 people on that session. Yes. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. But um, 
don't uh, don't let this year go by without setting dreams because there's just no sense in you building somebody else's dream. I, I, I just believe that you owe it to your family to build your family's dream and you know you owe it to yourself. Yeah. You owe it to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So Kim, it's been a pleasure being able to share this uh, strategy with you. Again, if you actually want to read the book, uh, Mentored by a Millionaire by Stephen Scott, probably out of print, but you might find a used one on Amazon or something like that. It's an older book, but uh, it's where I got this idea for this. So I, I want to credit Stephen Scott for this incredible goal-setting strategy and, and just tell you that um, yeah. I created a Facebook group also uh, where uh, people can actually come in and ask questions. And then what I did was I also offered, I said, if you all get hung up on a goal, um, I will do a 10-minute session with you. Or if you get hung up on it and you need some encouragement, um, I'll do a 10-minute session with you through Monday. So today is what the, we're at the 30th right now. So I told everybody by Monday, which I think is the second, um, we, uh, I would, you, but yeah, call me before and then. After that, it's, we're done, you know. And so, but it's uh, a lot of people, after they get it done their first time, you'll, you'll never not ever do it again. I mean, you'll always do it every year once you do it once because you'll realize that it actually works. Yes, I've shared it with so many people. I can't even tell you how many people I've shared it with. And I mean, I said I was guilty of not doing it myself. So I said I found such an easy way of doing it. You have to do it. Yep. You have to make a plan. It's been a real pleasure spending time with you, Kim. Thanks for having me. Always, always a pleasure. Don't forget to go to Dreams for 2017 to watch the full video. And uh, Kim, yep, yeah, we'll see you on yeah. the video. So thanks, guys.